Alright everybody, welcome back to the quarantine kitchen. Alright, uh, today, oh, I should close this cabinet so the kitchen looks cleaner. Okay, sorry about that. So today, anytime you're in a bind, you've let some time run over, it's getting to be 5.30 or 6, and you still need to make dinner for your family, I call my friends over at old El Paso and ask for the assist. All right. All right, so that's what we're going to work on today. It's like, oh, but then, you know, you look at stuff like that, then you think of all these add-ons. But before the add-ons, we are going to wash our hands. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. Going fast, going fast. Time is money, money's time. I hope I'm not in the way there. Okay. 19 and 20 and 21 and 22, 23, 24. All right. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do the unconventional speed defrost because sometimes you kind of forget to plan ahead and whatever, whatever. And it is what it is. Speed to oop, speed to frost one zero zero zero. Okay, and now let's see. It. Oh, oh my goodness! I just washed this thing. It's it's, it's usually it's kind of hard and weird because it's uh I don't wash it as often as I should, so it's kind of crustated and stuff. Oh. I'll be right back. I forgot one of the most, my most important elements of my combat apron. So I almost forgot my grill sergeant patch. I don't know if that's in focus or not, but let's put this bad boy where it belongs. I'm the self-proclaimed unofficial grill sergeant of the year, 42 years running. Okay, that's great. So, well our meat is speed defrosting, which is kind of unhealthy and weird. We'll go through what you need to survive in the combat kitchen or quarantine kitchen during this crisis. Okay. For close quarters combat, when you're cooking and all of a sudden somebody comes in that entrance to the kitchen, you got your short range shotgun. All right. You always need things for morale in the kitchen and different things like that. One of my favorite things is, we'll throw it on the shoulder there, 2018 Fantasy Football Championship belt. If you played against me in 2018, there it is. All right. We'll put that bad boy down there. All right. One thing I always go to and I hide from my whole family when I buy them to get my morale up, combos, pepperoni pizza. Okay. Oh my goodness, one of my favorites. One of those cheap things you can find. Oh, hey Mater, how you doing? There's the family dog. You probably can't see him. The camera's not focused on you, buddy. It's a little bit too high, sorry. So this is one of those things when we're not in a time of a pandemic or whatever, you just go by the dollar store, it's cheap on the shelf and you don't pay any attention. But if you have one during a pandemic or crisis, and all of a sudden, everything starts getting crazy. The lights are flickering. Everybody's throwing up in the corner scared. You pull it out. You got it on clearance at the dollar store, and now it's worth more than everything in your house. <laughs> Instalite. Okay. <laughs> the Declaration of Independence, okay? That sits above my desk chair in my office, and I can just see it, and it says, we the people. Oh, it's amazing. Get that morale up. All right. What do we got else in? What do we got in here? A half-eaten bag of combos. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, the red, blue chem, chem light. Yes. Let's say you're calling in an LZ because you need backup because, well, really bad things are happening around your perimeter. And they say, we see red in the LZ. You flick it to red and you throw it. And then the chopper knows where to land. Okay, moving on. The mini assault rifle. 
mainly for long range, but if needed to, close range, whatever needs to happen. Pure intimidation. All right. There we go. All right. And you can't have a Pepsi till you have dinner. All right, guys. Now, one thing we'll do while we've got a minute 38 left on there is anytime you have a kit or something like that, you always want to try to figure out inventive ways to spice it up. First of all, this was donated to the quarantine kitchen by a lovely person named Emma. And Emma, we thank you very much. We will use that today to spice up our tacos a bit. Okay. All right. Then we're going to do, you know, sometimes with ranch, you can mess around, put a tiny bit of that on your taco, whatever, whatever. And obviously, we're going to go with lettuce. And for the second episode in a row, we don't have tomatoes. I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. Then, we also don't have shredded cheese. So I'm going to have to slice up some sliced cheese to make sure it's easy. Okay. That's great. And this is a cutting board. Okay. Now, if I was more organized and different things like that, I would do this on Facebook Live. That way I could ask people real time, what am I missing here? But if I try to do this Facebook Live, <laughs> You would watch maybe a couple of minutes in, then you'd be like, I can't handle this. All right. Oh, by the way, I relaxed my gear because I've got my family securing the perimeter. So everything's good with that. So I went ahead and relaxed that. All right. We're looking good. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got 10 seconds left on here. What else can we look at here? All right. And beat. There we go. Let's give it the old sanitary finger test there. Oh, it's great. It's great. Okay, so on this we've got the kit includes mild taco sauce, seasoning mix, six stand and stuff shells, six flour tortillas, one pound of ground beef, two thirds cup of water. But we all know when they say one pound of ground beef, it's like, oops, I meant like 1.5, you know, just so you make sure you got enough ground beef there. All right, you know how YouTube, they have those unboxing videos and reviews? Maybe we should do an unboxing video for this. The El Paso Taco Dinner Kit. But it's the bold nacho cheese flavored and soft. Okay. Okay, that wasn't as appealing as I thought it would be because everything is is not see-through, so when you open it, it looks like some kind of a bunker meal, which kind of applies to the situation, don't you think? <laughs> All right, ladies and germs. Oop, that wouldn't be good if it stayed in there. So we've got this, uh, so I figured out what the nacho cheese flavored and soft, okay? It's like generic, like Dorito shells or whatever they're called. So you got the Dorito shells and then the soft, flour shelves. We're letting the preheat oven, the oven preheat, which my oven takes about 70 times longer than usual. Uh, it needs to go to 325 and then these shelves are going to sit in there for five or six minutes. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and put this ground beef and I'm going to, I call this move the scoop and toss. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? All right. Okay. There's our ground beef. We'll just say it's one pound, even though it might be closer to two. Okay. All right, we'll get our spatula out of here. Start chopping that up. All right. Here we go. Now this, now one thing I noticed about this, this box, man, once everything starts going, everything's quick. Like the shells cook in six minutes, the meat cooks in seven. So everything goes really quick. So hopefully I can keep it all together here. All right, ladies and germs, the moment of truth. And here we go, 325 for the shells. All right. And then we got the heat going for, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Are you like me when you're cooking and you read the box once and you're like, okay, I'm done. And you throw it down. 
Then like 15 seconds later, you grab the box, and you're like, I'll check one, I'll check one more thing, one more thing. All right, I'm not gonna see it again. Or you're like me, you do that about 17 times, and then you try to throw the box away because you're like, I don't need to see it anymore. Then you get it out of the trash and reread it. I'm like that, even on simple things like this. Medium high, breaking and stirring. But we don't cover it, do we? Reduce them. Nope. I don't see anything uncovered. All right. On a serious note, just a shout out to everybody that is going out in the midst of all this that's going on to serve others. Uh, I salute you. Definitely salute you. And I couldn't imagine for some of these professions what it's like to just go just in the midst of obvious and complete danger like I'm not just saying New York it applies to everywhere but I've seen some of the videos for the New York hospitals and it's just heart-wrenching so I salute you guys okay well the cows frying over here guys do me a favor in the comments or whatever give me, give me and Ryan some ideas on some infomercials because we had some good ones that popped out and then uh, being busy with raising a squirrel and different things hi Barb are you wanting to come in the camera view it's right there Oh, are you doing your pre-meal snack of Cheerios? Oh, that's disturbing. Thank you. You're welcome. Jog on. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. I was, I'm sure it was really super important. Anyway, the cow's starting to brown here. How now, brown cow? Erica, my memory lasts about 15 seconds, maybe a little bit less. So I have no idea what I was saying before. I was rudely interrupted by Barb. But, hey Ryan, you want to come in here? You just got to make sure where you stand. Like it's the camera's a little higher this time. Who's that? I can't see. What is it? But Oh, you won. Battle Royale in Fortnite. Tell the camera what you did. Can you see yourself right there on the little... You got to win in what? Fortnite. Fortnite. Seven kills. Seven kill win in Fortnite. Good job, man. Wait, me and my squad had 18 kills together. And you know what I get to reward you with? Tacos. Taco Tuesday. Is it, <gasps> is it really Tuesday? Yeah. <gasps> that was unplanned. Taco Tuesday. All right. My best friend. All right, bro. I'll see you in just a little bit. Taco Tuesday on accident. What are the chances, man? Taco Tuesday. Quarantine, it's like even little tiny things like accidentally having a Taco Tuesday is like anything that makes you smile and anything that kind of gets your head off everything that's going on. And just for him to come in here like that and win on his little video game or whatever and then joke around with me, that just brings me so much joy, man. Uh, Unfortunately, in the quarantine situation, your kids can bring you so much joy, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> just as quick as that happens, they can bring you a lot of pain. But we won't get into that. This is the quarantine kitchen, not uh, Dr. Quarantine's uh, therapy session. So, All right. We're getting good and brown on this meat here, swimming in the grease, so I think we'll go ahead and... Uh, drain the grease but I do have a question okay when you drain grease do you run the water over the grease over the ground beef as you drain it or like me do you run it to the side of the strainer and I run it down so uh, there's always hot water going down the drain so the grease won't do whatever to the pipes so how do you drain your grease it's very important for America to know let me know in the comments all right here we go Let's turn on this hot water here. Oh my goodness, we're we are we're in good shape. Okay. With the wink wink one pound of ground cow. Oh, I almost forgot. We need two thirds a cup of water. Oh. Oh. 
I am draining the grease, man. I'm a professional. I mean, uh, I got a fan base right here because they know I'm such a gourmet, uh, yeah. So, don't question my authority in the kitchen. <laughs> Okay, I hope you guys can see me. Let's see. Okay, we got good hot water running. Put that right in the strainer there. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of grease. Yeah. Put this right back here for a second. Shake that out. Oh, yeah, that's greasy. Now, I might be wrong about this whole not running the water over the... I just don't know the true answer to that. Like, I don't know what's supposed to happen. So, and maybe it's just one of those habits that I got where I thought, man, I need to do this. And it doesn't even make sense. You guys need to let me know. Okay. Two-thirds water in a ground beef. Put that back over. And I think we're supposed to stir in all the goodies in the process. Let's reread for the 17th time here. Stir in water and seasoning. Bring to boil. Okay. All right. Here comes it. Give it a shake there. Uh-oh. Something's burning. Oh, it's a piece of rogue ground beef that smells like the house is on fire. My fault. <laughs> My bad. I mean, I mean, that smells horrible. I'm about to eat it for dinner. Anyway, we won't go there. All right, here comes the seasoning. Get in there. Oh. As these summer days, spring days go along, I'm going to be uh, wearing nothing under this apron. Well, I'm not talking about pants-wise. I'm talking about shirt-wise because right now in my long-sleeve uh, combat gear, even without my Kevlar, I'm burning up, man. But I'm trying to be respectful of the kitchen. And my viewers. <laughs> okay. All right, medium heat. Wait for it to boil, and then we're going to let it simmer, baby. Let it simmer. In a situation where whoever has the microphone can do whatever they want. I do want to give a shout out to the Womack Downing Brown Abrushi clans. Uh, miss you guys. Haven't seen you guys in a while because of this whole situation going on in the world. But I just wanted to say hey and I love you guys. Another shout out I'd like to give as well. We're finishing this up here is there was a brush fire in the Limbo Falls community yesterday. And uh, I don't even know if I'm going to get everybody correct that was there because the scene was so spread out but uh, I think it was Cross North Newland, Green Valley, Banner Elk, Forestry Service, I think Jonas Ridge was paid. Just so many people came together and did such an amazing job. Uh, these people are so skilled and I think most of the time uh, nobody even knows what they do but uh, if you were on that fire uh, I salute you. I watched you guys work and it was just amazing the knowledge and the skill that all you all have, so I appreciate you. So this is one of those situations where you had to bring everything to a boil and then once it boiled you bring it down to a simmer and it's supposed to thicken up. But I wish I had the camera right here. It's like ground beef swimming in a mixture of water and grease and you're like, how in the world is this going to thicken up? It says three to four minutes. I just don't get it. But I'm just going to follow the directions because that's how we roll here on the kitchen. And uh, it must be wrote on the box for some reason. <laughs> right now, you look at it and you're like, this is what's for dinner. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, it's like I can't wait to eat. And then after that, have like a pantoprazole and uh, a cup of Pepto. <laughs> and so, uh, that's probably what everybody says after they get done eating when I cook. Oh, man, I've had, I'll tell you what. I'll be 100% honest with you. The only bad meal I've ever cooked on the quarantine kitchen was the first one. The salmon and new, uh, ramen, I think it was. Oh, my gosh, dude. I was trying to really keep everybody entertained, and I was really salvaging a decent meal. 
and it would have been decent. And then I decided to mix the lemon pepper with the ramen beef flavor packet. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I ever told you guys on camera, my stomach hurt for hours. It was disgusting, but I was trying to eat it to like save face. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. If, you, if you're if you rocking a, a ramen beef flavored or any flavored uh, flavor packet, just let it ride, man. <laughs> let it ride. Maybe some hot sauce, but that's about it. Trust me. I was just informed by one of my assistants that works in the kitchen that instead of two-thirds a cup, I put one and two-thirds cups. So that's why I look like the ground beef was kind of swimming there. So I just kind of drained half of it and simulated two-thirds of a cup. Hi, Barb. Do you want to be on here? How could you forget? I don't know. It's like if I start filming and you have an eight, that means I'm still filming. But if you're eating, there's a very good chance I'm done. Okay. Well, I can, I'm not going to tell you you can't come in your own kitchen. Besides, dinner's pretty much ready. Pretty much. That didn't sound good. Okay. Are we recording? All right. Here we go. I think we're good on this ground beef here. Good on the shells. Off camera, I cut up the sliced cheese into cube cheese, which is do what you got to do. And I got the tomatoes, so we got our cheeses and our uh, cheese and lettuce. All right. So, here we go. Father, Lord, and Heavenly, we come to Jesus' name. We thank you for this day and thank you for watching over us. And just please bless this country and and just help everybody through all this and help them learn from this and help the country just lean on you more and more every day. We thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we got our hot sauce on there. Thank you, Emanella. And we got our lettuce, cheese, and here we go. Mmm. All right. The hard shell is not too bad. Let's try to roll this one up one-handed here. Oh. Mmm. And the soft's not bad either. All right. God bless every single one of you. I thank you for tuning in. I wish you guys the best in this uh, time of crisis. And I hope this series is bringing you some joy. Ryan, come on. There's about five seconds left. Okay. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> We'll see you guys. Thanks for all your support.